I'm Ernest Suggs of the Atlanta Journal Constitution. I'm here today with Isaac Hayes III at Fanbase Headquarters. Thank you for having us here today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for showing up to the, to the HQ. I think this is the first interview I've done. No, the second interview I've done here. Okay, so tell us about tell us about the space first of all. You know, everybody uh, talks about space. Tell us about this. I wanted to, I wanted to get a space that I think was open, open workspace. People can think, create. Um, I know we're in the middle of COVID, but I wanted people to be able to also, you know, utilize the the, the space to shoot content. Um, we have a great stage, mural, you know, backdrop over there, um, podcast room. DJ booth, so I really wanted it to provide opportunities for people to create content whenever they felt like it. Um, things are looking like they're getting back to normal, so I know there'll be a lot more people coming in. So tell us about tell us about Fanbase and what that is and what your concept is and what you want to do with that. So Fanbase is a social media startup that's monetized for every user. Um, I came up with the idea because a young man, young kid at the time, I think he's like 17, um, a young kid at the time went viral dancing in a Spider-Man costume. Um, and again, Ghetto Spider-Man, right? Yeah, Ghetto Spider. And um, he was from Memphis and I just, you know, gave him a shout out and said, hey. And he wanted to have a conversation about management. So I said, people need to be able to pay him to learn how to dance like him because he's a great dancer. And so I felt like um, we needed a monetized social media platform for all users. So how do people make money on social media? How so, can they make So Fanbase is the first okay. monetized subscriber-based social network. That's a native application, I means on iOS and Android, it's a mobile device. People can subscribe directly to users. Um, it's optional, meaning you can have followers. So people can, you can follow someone, but if that, was some, that person makes content for, let's say, uh, exclusive content, if someone says, I'm gonna make a really dope cooking show or a podcast, or I'm gonna teach people how to do their taxes, um, you can subscribe to that content. Um, for $3.99 a month. And so um, it's just for anybody to use. It doesn't matter you know, who you are, where you are, what you do. Um, fan base is someplace you know, that, that you can monetize your content. So what is your background in terms of this, in this area? Is this the first time you've done something like this? Yeah, this is the first, this is my first tech startup, which sounds crazy because I didn't imagine myself getting into tech. Um, I consider myself a creative person and I always, you know, I'm looking for ways to explore creative outlets. But coming from the music industry, though, I think it gives me a wealth of experience in dealing with a multitude of scenarios, especially from the business side. You mentioned coming from the music industry, and I think um, everyone who's watching this, you know your name is Isaac Hayes III, yep. which means your father is the great Isaac Hayes. Yes, indeed. Four songs on Hot Butter Soul, which is still a classic album. Mm -hmm. um, what did he teach you about what you're doing now? Is this a natural extension for the son of this great soul man to do this extension of, of, of helping artists kind of get their own money? Absolutely. Um, as, a, as a songwriter, um, my father was definitely, um, I'd say robbed out of an enormous amount of income um, from ownership of his catalog and his music. And so I've always been the person that's looked at ownership as extremely important. And I think secondly, my father was just a person that was extremely um, a hard worker. Like, you know, he worked, he, worked, he worked and dedicated himself to his craft. And because of those things, uh, I often say that I don't have to be my father to be great, but because of him, I will be great. So I don't have to follow exactly in his footsteps but the, the lessons of ownership, the lessons of hard work, um, being deeply connected to his community, those are things that are naturally a part of who I am because of him. Um, and I think they give me a unique um, perspective and a, and a unique understanding as a black founder in the tech space with fan base. So you could sympathize as, as, as someone who's lived through this, you can sympathize with ghetto Spider-Man mm -hmm. about you know, what he doesn't own mm -hmm. and what he could potentially lose. I mean, I can sympathize or empathize with the entire black community because um, African-American culture is such a, a it, it, honestly, it's not even such. African-American culture is the economic engine of social media. It's what drives innovation, creation, you know what I'm saying, virality, creativity, and more often, 
none of the, the contributors of those things actually get paid. They don't get monetized or the opportunities for them to monetize are few and far between. Um, and Fanbase, as a black founded company, but not black only, um, at least gives us the opportunity that we are mindful and observant of our community and the contributions they, com uh, they contribute so they don't get lost amongst all these other creators um, that tend to make, you know, millions of dollars, but no, nobody black makes the top 10 list on Forbes of, you know, the highest creators on TikTok. So um, how, you know, we're here in Atlanta. How important was it for you to start this in Atlanta? knowing what Atlanta means to the country, knowing what Atlanta means to the world? Um, I think it wouldn't have been able to be started anywhere else. Um, the thing that I love about Atlanta is people underestimate us, especially the black community. Um, they kind of don't bother us, they let us do our thing. And uh, this is the type of city, if you're African American, that there are no ceilings. You know, I've lived in Atlanta my entire life. I've never felt like a minority a day living here. Um, that really leaves the mind and the imagination to dream and not say that there's there's some sort of level of white supremacy that you know hunkers down and, and suppresses your ideology on what you can do and so I think um, it gives me the, the the energy and the motivation to say you can build you know a tech startup to rival all these other companies right in the city of Atlanta who are you to think you can do that and if I was in LA or New York or San Francisco they'd be like Get out of here, but I think the uniqueness of being a black founder in a, a, a politically aware city, black city, I think makes, you know, makes the, the perfect recipe for success with fan base. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having us here today. It's been great. Thank you. We appreciate it. And we'll, um, we'll be looking forward to seeing how you guys are going to grow in the next couple of years. Absolutely. Next couple of months. Yes. Or weeks. Absolutely. All right. Daily. Yep. All right. All right.